Hey everybody, welcome to it. Oakland Alameda Coliseum, the site of the 1987 All-Star Game here in History Maker Baseball as we've reached the All-Star break and I have pulled out the as-played rosters and as-played lineups and I'm set to go for this exhibition. This is not for home field advantage in the World Series or anything like that. It's strictly an exhibition. So we're going to get going. I've got the umpires stationed as they were in the actual game. Well, let's meet the two teams, the representatives from each team anyway. First, I'll show you the reserves for each team, and then we'll have the public address announcer announce the starting lineups for each ball club. First for the National League, representing the Atlanta Braves, catcher Ozzie Virgil and outfielder Dale Murphy. Representing the Cubs, starter Rick Sutcliffe, relief pitcher Lee Smith. From the Cincinnati Reds, reliever John Franco, and catcher Bo Diaz. From the Los Angeles Dodgers, Pedro Guerrero, and Horrell Hershiser. From the Montreal Expos, outfielder Tim Raines. Shortstop Hubie Brooks, third baseman Tim Wallach. From the New York Mets, first baseman Keith Hernandez, pitcher Sid Fernandez. From the Philadelphia Phillies, reliever Steve Bedrosian, second baseman Juan Samuel. From the Pittsburgh Pirates, pitcher Rick Russell. From the St. Louis Cardinals, outfielder Willie McGee. From the San Diego Padres, outfielder Tony Gwynn. And from the San Francisco Giants, outfielder Jeff Leonard. Those are your National League Reserves. For the American League Reserves, <clears throat> representing the Boston Red Sox, pitcher Bruce Hurst. Outfielder Dwight Evans. Representing California, pitcher Mike Witt. Representing the Chicago White Sox, D.H. Harold Baines. Representing Cleveland, D.H. Pat Tabler. Representing the Tigers, shortstop Alan Trammell. Second baseman Lou Whitaker. Catcher, Matt Noakes, and pitcher, Jack Morris. Representing the Kansas City Royals, third baseman, Kevin Seitzer. Representing Milwaukee Brewers, relief pitcher, Dan Plesak. Representing the Minnesota Twins, outfielder, Kirby Puckett. Representing the New York Yankees, reliever, Dave Rigetti. Representing Oakland A's, first baseman, Mark McGuire. And relief pitcher, Jay Howell. Representing the Seattle Mariners, pitcher Mark Langston. Second baseman, Harold Reynolds. Representing the Texas Rangers, D.H. Larry Parrish. Representing Toronto, the Blue Jays, Tony Fernandez at short. And relief pitcher Tom Hinkey. Those are your reserves for the American League. Now we'll meet the starters first for the visiting National League. and World Series from the New York Mets, number five, manager David Johnson. <laughs> the National League leader in home runs with 27 and slugging percentage at 694. Making his all-star debut from the Cincinnati Reds, number 44, left fielder Eric Davis. Batting second, a four-time Gold Glove winner. He recently returned from the disabled list with a home run and two RBIs in a two for three first game from the Chicago Cup, number 23, second baseman Ryan Sandberg. Among the National League leaders in RBIs, home runs, slugging percentage, hits, and game winning RBIs, batting third and playing center field from the Chicago Cup, number eight, Andre Dawson. National League MVP among league leaders again this year in home runs and RBIs, batting fourth, playing third base. From the Philadelphia Phillies, number 20, Mike Smith. Batting fifth, leading the Rangers in RBIs with 86, game running RBIs with 13. From the St. Louis Cardinals, number 22, first baseman Jack Clark. Hitting 600 in his three previous All-Star games, the first National League to be elected as an All-Star starter in each of his first four 
four seasons, batting six for the New York Mets, number 18, the right fielder Daryl Strawberry. Twice voted the All-Star MVP, he has hit 313 and eight All-Star games, batting seven for the New York Mets, number eight catcher, Gary Carter. This year's top vote getter in the fan balloting plane in his seventh All-Star game, batting eight for the St. Louis Cardinals, number one, shortstop Ozzie Smith. Warming up in the bullpen, batting ninth, the 1986 National League Cy Young Award winner, currently leading the National League with 148 strikeouts from the Houston Astros, number 33, pitcher Mike Scott. Here in 1986, former Oakland A's skipper and current manager of the American League champion Red Sox, the American League manager John McNamara. Seven-time American League stolen base leader, he established the American League record for leadoff homers. From the New York Yankees, the center fielder, number 24, Ricky Henderson. <laughs> Batting second and playing first base, the only major leaguer to win an RBI title, batting title, and MVP award in his first three seasons. From the New York Yankees, number 23, Don Mattingly. Time American League batting champion, leading again this season with a 375 average, hitting third plate, third base from the Boston Red Sox, number 26, Wade Boggs. Batting clean off the American League's leading RBI man with 76 at the All Star break, the left fielder from the Toronto Blue Jays, number 11, George Bell. Owner of a 393 average in his 10 previous All-Star games, batting fifth for the New York Yankees right fielder, number 31, Dave Winfield. The shortstop who led major leaguers at his position for four straight years in RBIs and homers, hitting sixth for the American League, the Baltimore Orioles Ironman, number eight, Cal Ripken. Batting seven and entering the game, the 333 All-Star Game average, also for the Baltimore Orioles, the catcher, number 15, Terry Kennedy. Kennedy. Yankee Yankee captain, Yankee. hitting 309 at the All-Star break in the batting eight of this evening's game, the second baseman, number 30, Willie Randolph. The 1985 Cy Young Award winner and a 15-game winner so far this season, batting in the money with one and warming up in the bullpen. From the Kansas City Royals, pitcher number 18, Brett Saberhagen. All right. <clears throat> so there you have the starting lineups and the rosters for both teams. We'll be right back for the first pitch. Okay, before the first pitch, we need to meet the umpires. And at home plate from the American League is Don Deckinger. At first base from the National League, Dick Stello. Second base from the American League, Vic Voltaggio. At third base, National League Joe West, and he was just he he was uh, an umpire in the most recent All Star game from this year. So thirty years later, he was still an All uh, still an umpire All Star. In left field, representing the American League, Daryl Cousins, and in right field, representing the National League, Bob Davidson. Now the right and left fielder umpires in this game are, are irrelevant, but. They're just there for window dressing just to fill out the umpire roster. So we're ready to go. Brett Saberhagen has finished his warm-up tosses. And being an all-star game, there's going to be a lot of substitutions going on, kind of a free substitution kind of thing. We're not worrying about you know, bullpen warm-up rules or whatever. This, like we said, it's an exhibition. This is, you know, they're not vying for home field or anything. It's, this is back when it was truly an exhibition. And, again, there's no DH, so when you get to the pitcher spot, you know, you're going to be using pinch hitters off the bench. So we're going to try to make sure that uh, in the nine-inning game that just about everybody gets a chance to play. And if it happens to go as extra, then we'll make a rule that if you've been used, you can come back just so there's not a, a problem there. <clears throat> All right. So we're ready to go. Brett Saberhagen going to be facing Eric Davis, who's in left field today for the All-Stars. So Saberhagen against Davis in our first pitch of the 1987 All-Star game. And right away, we get an unusual 1-3-5, which is balks and bogeys. So interesting way to start 
with box and bogeys. When you get a red one and a black five, that is box and bogeys. So we're gonna roll two dice plus the decider and see what the box and bogeys have to say. Oops, it's a six, six. How do you like that? So we go to doubles. Doubles on box and bogeys sends us to highlight reel B. So automatically here on the first uh, at bat of the game, we're getting something unusual. So highlight reel B, and we get a double one. So that's even more doubles. Double one sends us to highlight reel D. I don't think I've ever gone to highlight reel D in the 86 games I've played for the Braves. So now we're on highlight reel D. Double one again. What is going on with this? Now we're at highlight reel Y. When you roll double ones on highlight reel D, you go to highlight reel Y, which is very rare events. It's like even on the back page of the book. So highlight reel Y, I certainly hope it's not another double again. It's not, it's a 2-3. So highlight reel Y, a 2-3, fan interference turns deep fly out into home run, no reversal by umpire. So how about that? Eric Davis, because of fan interference, just took Saberhaven deep, and the first bat of the game is a highlight reel Y home run for Eric Davis. And already, after one at bat, they've outscored the real All-Star game. It's one to nothing. If you remember the real game, it went extra innings of no score. So now, after all that festivities, here comes Ryan Sandberg, trying to get back onto a normal board if we can. Two, three, five. Two, three, five for Sandberg. It's asking, is Saberhagen wild, which he is not, is Sandberg eager? He is not. So he will hit a ground out to second base because he's not patient. So it's a 4-3 ground out, and there's one away. That'll bring up Andre Dawson playing center field in this All-Star game. 1-5-5. One, 1-5-5 five, five. One, five, five is blank for the pitcher. Is the batter a home run king? Well, Andre Dawson just happens to be a home run king. So Andre Dawson has just taken Saberhagen over the center field bleachers, and the National League jumps to a 2 nothing lead before the seats even get warm. 2 nothing, and before MC Hammer can even sit down in his seat. So there's two, two, two to nothing ball game, and here comes another home run here from Mike Schmidt. 2-2-6, two, two, that's a hit by pitch, but the decider die says he's not. Uh, is he the cleanup batter? Yes, Mike Schmidt is the cleanup batter, so we got another home run, this one to right field. So they've gone to left field, center field, and right field. Three solo shots by the National League Stars, and Brett Saberhagen just doesn't know what to think about it. He was trying to go two innings in this game, but he may not go one the way things are going. Here comes another power man, Jack Clark. And look at this, 3-3-3. Three, three, three. That's not good for Saberhagen. 3-3-3 three, three, three is blank for the pitcher. He's not utility or sad sack. So we get a triple to deep left field unless he's a home run king. And you know what? Jack Clark is a home run king. So we got another home run. This one a, 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 to deep left field. It is now 4 to nothing. Four solo home runs out of five batters for the National League. And John McNamara is shaking his head over there. He's got uh, bullpen activity going quickly. In fact, he's got a reliever going because they take less time to warm up than uh, the starters. So to be realistic, he's going to get uh, Dan Plesak warming up in the bullpen in a hurry. And uh, Daryl Strawberry, the batter. This is really weird. Four home runs out of the first five batters. That's just very, very strange. 2-3-6. Glad I'm not doing this as a live video. It would really be weird. 2-3-6, 2-3-6, double control. No, he doesn't have a double control. The pitcher's not batting. So we got to walk. So Daryl Strawberry. Sabrehagen says, well, at least I won't give up a home run. I'll just walk you. And that'll bring up Gary Carter. Gary Carter, look at this. 1-1-1. One, one, one. Incredible. 1-1-1. One, one, one. Carter's not a scrapper. In fact, Carter is a semi-home run king. So he hits a home run to left field off of that 1-1-1 one, one, one chart. That's a two-run shot, and it's 6 to nothing. 6 to nothing National League. That is the fifth home run, and Saberhagen's going to be coming out right away. He's not even going to have any chance here, as Dan Plesak will now be coming in. He'll, he'll leave his, his uh, MLB Network studios and go back in time and... Try to see if he can get out of this inning. <clears throat> and actually, Mike Scott's going to get the hit before he gets a chance to pitch. 
Very, very strange. Here's Ozzy Smith. 136 for Ozzy. 136. Is he an ace? Yes, he is. Uh, no, he's not. Oh, no. I'm take, I take it back. He is. First batter of the game, he's automatically an ace. So he will strike out Ozzy Smith. Although Ozzy has a semi good eye. But the sire die says no. So Ozzy will take the strikeout. And there's two away. Now Mike Scott gets to bat, of all people, before he gets to pitch. How many times does that happen in an all star game? Here's the delivery 466. 466 is Pleasak Wild. No, he's got control. Is he a home run king or a slugger? Uh, not hardly. So that means Mike Scott's going to get a base hit to left field. He's not active, so he won't steal, but he will get a base hit. And now they bat it around, and Eric Davis back up to the box again here in the first inning. We get a 1 4 6. <clears throat> 1 4 6. Does the pitcher have flash? Dan Plezak does have flash. So it will be a strikeout because Eric Davis does not have the good eye. So Davis strikes out to end the inning. But what an inning it was. Six runs come in for the National League off of five home runs. We go to the bottom of the first. It's National League six, American League nothing. And talk about uh, benefiting from run support. Mike Scott, got to be one of the happiest guys in the ballpark, gets to come out and start pitching with a 6 nothing lead. So American Leaguers got their work cut out for him. Here's Ricky Henderson. We get a 2-2-6. Two, 2-2-6. Two, six. Two, two, six. He is not hit by the pitch because the decider die came up blank. He's not the cleanup hitter, so he will hit a fly out to left unless he's a whiffer, which he is not. So Ricky flies to left for one away. That'll bring up Don Mattingly. Mattingly, a 1-4-5. 1-4-5. Is the pitcher a struggler? No, it's a good thing we didn't have that last inning. So it's going to be a ground ball to first by Mattingly. Taken by Jack Clark. Three unassisted. Two up, two down, and this is the way the All-Stars are supposed to pitch. And here's Wade Boggs. 4-4-6 four, four, off of Scott. 4-4-6, four, four, is Scott a star? Scott is a semi-star, but the sire die says no. All right, is Sad Sack Utility or Patient? Well, he's semi-patient, so we got to roll to the sire die to see if Boggs is patient or not. And he is. So since he's patient, he's going to take a called strike three. And that's just the way it's going for the American League. Is they go down in order. One, two, three from Mike Scott. And after one complete, it is the National League six and the American League nothing. Ryan Sandberg in there facing Plesak again. And it's a one, four, six for Sandberg. One, four, six. Does Plesak have flash? We've already seen that he does. And Sandberg does not have the good eye, so he will strike out. So maybe Plezak bringing some order to this pitching staff, at least temporarily. Here's Andre Dawson. It's a 2-5-6. Two, 2-5-6. Six. Two, six. Is he a struggler? No. Is he a champion or patient? Dawson is neither champion nor patient. So we've got infield drama. So our first infield drama. And on the American League infield... Believe it or not, everyone is neutral. So everybody's neutral. And we get a 1-6. One, 1-6. Six. One, six. And that uh, siren is the alarm bell by John McNamara to his pitching staff, uh, telling them to wake up. All right, it's 1-6 on the infield drama. 1-6 infield drama says shortstop gold. No, Cal Ripken is not listed as gold, at least not for this particular season. So it's going to be a sharp liner for a base hit. So Dawson smokes one past Ripken at short. Four base hit, one out single. Brings up Mike Schmidt. Schmidt, one of the many who homered in the first inning. We get a 1-4-6. One, 1-4-6. Four, six. One, four, six. Is asking about flash again. And of course, Plezak does have flash. And Schmidt does not have a good eye, so it's a strikeout. So Plezak is at least dealing in this game. Here is Jack Clark. One, two, three, both flash and fresh. He is both flash and he is fresh because the sire diet gave him a dot. So that will be another strikeout. And that will end the inning. So Plezak comes in and pitches an inning and two-thirds 
and strikes out all five outs come on strikeouts. He gave up a single to Dawson, but otherwise it's five strikeouts. So his day will be done, and we'll bring in a new pitcher for the American League next inning. All right, so Mike Scott will get to pitch his second inning, and he'll be facing the left fielder from Toronto, George Bell. 2-2-4, two, 2-2-4, two, four. Two, two, four. pitching at home. Well, the National League are the visiting team, so that's not going to fly. Slugger, is George Bell a slugger? George Bell is a semi-slugger. Desire Die says no. But he's still going to single to right field. So how about that? So George Bell finally gets a base hit. And we go to the right now chart because that was in blue. And Mike Scott is semi-cold for giving up that base hit. And Dave Winfield is neutral since it's his first at bat. Oh, we've got to roll the cider die to see about Scott. He is not cold. Everybody's neutral. Both neutral. 1-6. One, 1-6. Six. One, six. Hot pitcher. No, he's not a hot pitcher. If he was, he would fool the batter for an easy grounder. Otherwise, batter lines clean, single, pass, second base. So Dave Winfield lines one, pass, second. Lead die of one. You only get one base advancement from George Bell. But the American League has two on to start the second for Cal Ripken. 135. That goes to the ballpark because of the black die. And Oakland plays semi big for both righties and lefties. So a semi big ballpark for Cal Ripken to see what he can do. It is a big ballpark and it's 5 5. Big ballpark, 5 5. It says grass ballpark. Yes, it is. Routine ground out, otherwise, crazy bounce off the edge of carpet. So it's a routine ground out because it's a grass field. But with a lead die of five, the runners advance. So we'll just say he grounded to, uh, we'll say he grounds to third. But the runners do move up. Runners do move up, but there's one away for catcher Terry Kennedy. Infield, of course, playing back. Two, three, six for Kennedy. And a two, three, six result. Two, three, six for Mike Scott. Double control? No, he does not have double control, so it's going to be a walk. It is a walk to Terry Kennedy, and that loads the bases with one out for Willie Randolph. Willie Randolph, the batter. One, two, five. Is he a struggler? No, he's not yet. He's getting, I'm sorry, one, two, five is a struggler, but he's not a struggler. Is Randolph patient? Randolph is semi patient. But the decider die says no. So that means he's going to ground to third unless he's a whiffer. He is not a whiffer. The ground ball to third, lead die of one, is a double play. And that's going to be a 5-4-3 double play to end the inning. And the American League comes up empty here in the second. So the wasted opportunity to leave him loaded after two complete. It is 6 nothing in favor of the National League. New pitcher for the American League to pitch the third inning is going to be lefty Mark Langston. So he will be in, and he will get a chance to see what he can do against this National League team. So Langston is an ace this first at bat against Daryl Strawberry. See what he can do. Oh, wrong team. Let's get the right team to bat here. So Daryl Strawberry against Langston. One two two, one two two, one two two. Is he a workman? No, he's not a workman. Is the batter a champion or a whiffer? Daryl Strawberry is a semi whiffer. Desire Die says he's a whiffer. So therefore, he will nub a single to third base. He will nub a single to third base. So that's just the way it's going for the National League. Everything is in their favor, it seems like. So that's going to bring up Gary Carter. Carter, a 256. 256. Is he a struggler? No. Is the batter champion or patient? Carter is not. So we have infield drama. And for the American League again, everyone is neutral on the infield drama. 26. 26 on infield drama. Second baseman gold. No. Randolph is neutral. He's not gold. So it says if he was gold, he would it would be a line out. Otherwise, it's a single into center field. So it's a single, and that puts runners at first and second. And Strawberry stops at second base on the lead die of two. 
Two on, nobody out for Ozzie Smith. Ozzie Smith, a 1-2-5. And a 1-2-5 ask, is the pitcher a struggler? No, he's got to give up three hits in a row to be a struggler. So he's not a struggler. Is Ozzie Smith patient? He's semi-patient. Desire Die says he's patient. So therefore, it's a walk. However, the umpire goggles have come up. And the umpire goggles say on a 1-2-5, a questionable or strict umpire call strike three. Well, Don Dinkinger is questionable. So he has just rung up Ozzie Smith. This will not be a walk. It'll be a strikeout. And the Wizard of Oz is down for one away. All right, Mike Sp Scott's turn is in the order, but he's going to come out. He's pitched his two innings. And now we're going to get a pinch hitter from the Ameri from the National League. And it's going to be... It's going to be... Jeff Leonard. So Jeff Leonard from the National League, from the Giants, will pinch hit for... Mike Scott, and then Rick Russell from the Pirates will be the new pitcher in the bottom of the third. So Jeff Leonard getting the pinch hitting job here. And we get a 4-5-5. Four, 4-5-5, five, five. Four, five, five. does the pitcher have flash? Langston does have flash, so it will be a strikeout because Langst uh, Leonard does not have the good eyes. So it's a strikeout for Langston. Out number two, and Leonard is gone in his pinch hitting uh, all-star appearance. That'll bring up Eric Davis. Still two on and two out. One, two, six. Is he fresh? Mark Langston's his first team to work, so he's obviously fresh. So since he is fresh, it is a line out to second, and that's going to end the inning. Nothing doing for the American League. So it seems like the... Na uh, I'm sorry, for the National League. So it looks like the American League bullpen or other pitchers other than Saberhagen is, have things under control. I don't know what happened to Saberhagen. He just got up on the wrong side of the bed or something. So that's going to do it for the National League. We'll go to the bottom of the third, and the pitching spot will lead off for the American League. So Langston will be pinch hit for. And we got a new pitcher, Rick Russell, from the Pirates, and now we're going to have a pinch hitter from the American League. And it's going to be D.H. Larry Parrish. So Larry Parrish from Texas will pinch hit. Larry Parrish will pinch hit for Mike Scott. I'm sorry, for uh, Langston. So Parrish for Langston. And this is going to be a mess on the score sheet, I know. Not even going to pretend, especially when we start getting these substitutions. All right, so Larry Parrish facing Russell. 3 5 6, and that is a righty on righty check. I didn't want to use a lefty because I wanted to use the DHs early for their pinch hitting. And that cost. John McNamara's team because you got a righty versus a righty, which is a strikeout. So, one away, and Parrish is out of there. Here is Ricky Henderson. So, Parrish, the thought I wouldn't go with a left right split. 2 3 6. 2 3 6, double control, no pitcher batting, no. It's, I'm, I'm sorry, I almost got confused. I hardly ever get double control, but actually, Rick Russell does have double control. So that's a ground ball to the pitcher and a ground ball to short. Two consecutive ground outs. So almost missed that. Ricky Henderson grounds to the pitcher. Mattingly then grounds to short. And just like that, the third inning is done. That's that double control. That's a, a monster feature to have in this game. So after three complete, it is National League 6, American League nothing. Be right back with the new American League pitcher. All right, top four, and Jack Morris is on the bump for the American League. He'll be facing Ryan Sandberg to start the fourth. We got a one, two, three. That's both flash and fresh. Well, he's certainly fresh because it's the first batter, and he is flash, so that's going to be a strikeout. So the strikeouts are rolling by the American League pitchers, but those home runs were rolling by the National League hitters early on. So here's Andre Dawson. It's a two, three, six. I think that's a double control check again, and it is, and Morris does not have a double control, so it will be a walk to Dawson. So Dawson has reached base all three times, home run, single, and a walk. Brings up Mike Schmidt. Schmidt, a 1-5-6. One, 1-5-6 five, six. One, five, six is blank for the pitcher. Is he a whiffer? He is not a whiffer. Mike Schmidt, not listed as a whiffer. So we have outfield drama. And in the National League outfield, or American League outfield, we have Ricky Henderson is listed as gold. Everyone else is neutral. It's a 
two six. Outfield drama, two six. Center fielder stoic. I don't think Ricky Henderson uh, is stoic. He's pretty fast. So since he's not stoic, he will make the grab of that fly out to center field for out number two. And now that brings up Jack Clark. Two Jacks facing each other. Jack Morris and Jack Clark. One, one, two. So one, one, two is going to ask, does Jack Morris have flash? Jack Morris does have flash, so it will be a strikeout. Clark does not have the good eye, so he does go down on strikes. And that's going to do it for the fourth inning. National League goes quietly. We go to the bottom of the fourth. And it is still six to nothing. Rick Russell going to go in for his second inning of work. It'll be Wade Boggs he'll be facing. Two, five, five. Two, five, five for Wade Boggs. Two, five, five is the pitcher a star. Rick Russell, besides having double control, is also a star. So it's going to be a strikeout. However, the good eye would take care of that. Oddly enough, Wade Boggs does not have the good eye. Semi-patient but does not have a good eye, so a rare Wade Boggs strikeout. In fact, he's 0 for 2 with two strikeouts in this game. Very unusual. Here's George Bell. 3-5-5 five, five for George Bell, actually for Morris. 3-5-5, five, five, Morris is not a struggler. George Bell, is he a champion? No, he's not. George Bell has a lot of qualities on his card, but champion is not one of them. So he will ground out to second. He's not a whiffer, so the ground out to second will hold. And Sandberg retires Bell for out number two. That'll bring up Dave Winfield. American League Stars just haven't gotten it going today. 155, they might get it going now. 155, blank for the pitcher. Is he a home run king? Dave Winfield is a semi home run king, but the decider die let him down, so he's not going to be a home run king this at bat. So he will just meagerly fly to center. And the inning is over. So two perfect innings by Rick Rushel. And after four complete, it's the National League still holding on to that 6 nothing lead. And now for the American League, Jack Morris. I think they're going to uh, go ahead and let these guys pitch one inning only. So they're going to bring in... With Strawberry, the lefty coming up, they're going to bring in Bruce Hurst. So Bruce Hurst is going to come in and pitch. He will take over for Jack Morris. Jack Morris pitched one inning, gave up a walk and two strikeouts, but nothing else. So since the, oddly enough, since the debacle of the first inning, where Saberhagen gave up six runs, five on home runs, the bullpen for the American League has been pretty, pretty stellar. Uh, all the way through. So, see if that continues as Bruce Hurst faces Strawberry. He will be an ace on this first at bat. Lefty on lefty as well. 2-5-6. Two, 2-5-6. Five, six. Two, five, six. Is he a struggler? No. Is the batter champion or patient? Strawberry is semi-patient. Desire Dye says he's patient, so that's a walk. So, Daryl Strawberry has reached base all three times. Two walks and a single. Brings up Gary Carter. Gary Carter, and these are the last few at-bats for these National League stars because the benches are going to have to start being used. 136 is the catcher, uh, is the catch, I'm sorry, is the pitcher an ace? Uh, Hurst is not an ace. Is he whiffer or cold? Well, he's certainly not cold, and he's not a whiffer either. So we got infield drama. So infield drama for the American League, and in the infield, everyone is neutral. And we get a 1-1. One, one. Interesting roll. 1-1 one, one on the infield drama asks, is the pitcher iron? Bruce Hurst is not listed as iron. He's neutral. If he was, it'd be an error. Otherwise, make stab at the mound for an easy ground out. So, And with the lead die of 1, that's a double play because the runner on first. So it's a 1. We'll call it a 1-6-3 double play to get the slow-moving Carter. And two quick outs. Turned by the American League. So Ripken and Randolph turned that double play. Here's Ozzy Smith, two out spaces empty. 2 2 5. 2 2 5. 2 2 5. Is he a star? No, Hurst is not listed as a star. Is he slugger or sad sack? No, Ozzy Smith's none of those. 
So he will single to center field. He's an active runner with steal. He is semi-active. Desiredi says he's active, so he's going to steal. Not sure McNamara likes that with the 6-0 lead, but he did it anyway. It's an all-star game. Why not? So now Rick Russell's spat, spot is up in the order, so he is going to leave for a pinch hitter. And with a lefty on the mound, they're going to a right-handed pinch hitter. If they can find one. And it's going to be... See who they're going to go with here. It looks like it's going to be Pedro Guerrero. So Pedro Guerrero is going to pinch hit for Russell. So Pedro Guerrero for Russell. So Guerrero is up. Ozzy Smith at second. Two outs against Bruce Hurst. 2-4-5. 2-4-5. Blank for the pitcher. Is he a hero? Guerrero is not a hero, so he will pop it up to second for the final out of the inning. That result was in red, but we're going to a new pitcher, so that's going to override that experience chart check. And we go to the bottom of the fifth, still six to nothing. New National League pitcher. The new National League pitcher is going to be Guerrero's teammate, Oral Hershiser. So Oral Hershiser is on the mound. And he'll be facing off against Cal Ripken to lead things off. And Hershiser will be an ace this first at bat. So Hurst gives a good inning. And now that brings up Ripken to lead off against Hershiser. 2-4-5. 2-4-5. Blank for the pitcher. Is he a, I just had this roll. Is he a hero? No, he's not a hero, so it's a pop-up to second. And this time we will go to the experience chart with Terry Kennedy and Hershiser. Kennedy is an icon. Hershiser is neutral. I'm not using any manager strategy cards in this game. I'm just going to let it ride as is. So on the experience chart, Kennedy is an icon. Hershiser is neutral. 1-5. One 1-5 five. One five on the experience chart. Prospect batter. Nope. Kennedy is an icon. So that's going to be a base hit. So it's a single for Kennedy. Kennedy gets a single. One out single brings up Willie Randolph, and then we'll get a pinch hitter for Bruce Hurst as well off that American League bench. It's a 1-3-6. Is he an ace? No, he's not an ace. So after that check on the 1-3-6, since he's not an ace, we go, is he whiffer or cold? Randolph is not a whiffer, and he's not cold, so we got infield drama. So we're back to infield drama for the National League. And on the infield of the National League, Ozzy Smith is semi-gold. So is Mike Schmidt. Sandberg, oddly enough, is listed as semi-iron. Mother, well, everybody's neutral now with no decider die. Two four, second baseman, gold. Nope, he's not listed as gold. So it's gonna be an error on Sandberg. So Sandberg boots it. Means that uh, Kennedy will go to second safely. And now we're gonna get a pinch hitter for the pitcher. Hurst, he will come out for a pinch hitter. So the American League pinch hitting section here, we'll go with Pat Tabler, DH. So Pat Tabler is going to pinch hit. I know it's righty on righty, but I'm trying to use these DH guys that aren't going to be playing in the field. So Tabler pinch hitting for Hurst against Hershiser. Two on, one out. And Tabler the batter. 1 3 3 for Pat Tabler. 1 3 3 ask. It's blank for the pitcher. Is he a slugger? Well, Pat Tabler is a hero, but he's not a slugger. So since he's not a slugger, it's simply a fly out to left. That'll be out number two, and Tabler is gone. Top of the order for Ricky Henderson. Henderson at 1 4 5. 1-4-5, it's not a struggler, so it's going to be a ground ball to third, and that's going to end the inning. So nothing doing for the American League here in the fifth. We go to the sixth. Score still National League six, American League nothing. We're right back with the new American League pitcher. Okay, new American League pitcher is the last starter on the roster, Mike Witt. He will be in to pitch. And since we're starting the sixth inning, we're going to have start having mass substitutions to get everybody in the game. So, 
for the National League. Scheduled hitter is Eric Davis. He will come out and be replaced by Willie McGee, who will take over in center field. So Willie McGee will lead things off. I'm sorry, Eric Davis is in left field, so it won't be Willie McGee. Let's find the left fielder that we can go with here. We're going to go with Tim Raines. My bad. Tim Raines. Tim Raines is going to take over and play left field, hit lead off for the National League. So Tim Raines in there against Mike Witt. 3-4-4. Three, 3-4-4. Four, four. Three, four, four. Is it a prospect pitcher? No. Is Tim Raines patient? Tim Raines is semi-patient, but the sire die says no. So he's going to pop it up to second, and that's out number one for the National League off of Mike Witt. So now Sandberg is scheduled, but he, of course, will be pulled back. And we'll get the backup second baseman for the National League. And that'll be Juan Samuel. So Juan Samuel will take over at second base for Sandberg and hit second as he faces Mike Witt. This is where the score sheet gets good. Oh, look at this. 6-6-6. Six, six, six. That's not good for Mike Witt, especially against a guy like Samuel. 6-6-6. Six, six, six. Is, is he an ace? No, he's not. Samuel is not a sad sack. So we got a glove check. And what glove is? Glove is a micro chart. And the only way to stop this is if you have a gold outfielder. And if we look at the American League outfielder, the only outfielder that's gold is the center fielder, Ricky Henderson. So unless we roll a two, this will be a home run. So the, the die has to be a two. If it's a two, Ricky's got a chance. It's a six, so it's long gone, gone into the bleachers. We don't even go to the he leaps chart. It's a home run. So Juan, play it again, Sam Well. Continuing his hot streak against that he had against the Braves with a home run. And it's now seven to nothing in favor of the National League. Andre Dawson, the scheduled hitter, but he will, of course, exit. And Tony Gwynn. Tony Gwynn will be the new right fielder. So Tony Gwynn is going to come in and bat against Witt. And Gwynn is a 3-3-6. Three, 3-3-6 three, six. Three, three, six for Gwynn. And a 3-3-6. Is he an ace? No, he's not. Is he sad sack, utility, or patient? Tony Gwynn, I thought he'd be patient, but he's not listed as patient. So it's going to be a single to center field. It's a single to center field for Tony Gwynn. That was in red, which normally means you go to the experience chart. But again, we're going to the bench. And a pinch hitter is going to override that. So the new third baseman to take over for Mike Schmidt is going to be Tim Wallach. So Tim Wallach. Tim Wallach will take over. He will pinch hit. So Tim Wallach for Schmidt. And this score sheet is getting to be unlegible. Or illegible, however you say it. Here's the pitch to Wallach. 1-4-5. One, 1-4-5. Four, five. One, four, five. Is he a struggler? No. It's a ground ball to third. And that's going to be a 5-4-3 double play. And that will end the inning as Mike Witt gets out of it without any further damage. But the one run does come in on the Samwell home run. And we go to the bottom of the sixth with the score. Now National League 7, American League nothing. Okay, before we go to the bottom of the sixth, let's go through the rest of the National League uh, wholesale changes. Jack Clark, who's the next scheduled batter at first base, will be replaced by Keith Hernandez. So Hernandez will take over. Daryl Strawberry in right field will be taken over by Dale Murphy. So Murphy will come over and bat for Strawberry, or take over in right field for Strawberry. And we had Hernandez taken over for Clark. New catcher is going to be from the Cincinnati Reds, Bo Diaz. I'm sorry, from the Braves, Ozzie Virgil. Ozzie Vir no, it will be Diaz. I'm sorry, we're going to let Virgil pinch hit. So Diaz is the catcher, and the new shortstop is going to be Hubie Brooks taking over for Ozzy Smith. All right, so let's pause this while I get everything all set to go. All right, new pitcher for the National League is right-hander Rick Sutcliffe, and leading off for the American League, Don Mattingly. They'll do their wholesale changes at the bottom of the inning. Here's Mattingly, 2-2-3. Two, two, 2-2-3, two, 2-2-3 two, three. Two, two, three. is the pitcher wild, Sutcliffe is not wild, is Mattingly a slugger or utility, 
He is a semi-slugger. Desire Die says he's a slugger, so he will end up lining out to shortstop. And there's one away. And Sutcliffe retires Mattingly. Brings up Wade Boggs. Wade Boggs and the American League All-Stars have just been shut down in this game by National League pitching. 4-5-5. Five, five. Does the pitcher have flash? Well, that's the, pretty much the only quality Sutcliffe has is semi-flash, but the sire die says no. Is he a home run king? Wade Boggs is certainly not a home run king. He's a slap hitter. So he will ground out to first, and that's the second out of the inning. Brings up George Bell. If he had that role, he would have a home run, but he does not. So he gets the roll of 1-2-6, which is a freshness check. And Sutcliffe, first inning, definitely fresh, so it's a line out to second. And that's going to do it for the American League All-Stars here in the sixth. We've completed six innings here at Oakland, and the score is National League 7, American League nothing. We'll be right back for all the National League changes. I'm sorry, the American League changes. Okay, new pitcher for the American League is Oakland's Jay Howell. And let's go through the wholesale substitutions on the American League roster. Taking over in right field, and he'll be leading off the next inning, is Dwight Evans. At shortstop is Alan Trammell to replace Ripken. Matt Noakes replaces Kennedy at catching. Lou Whitaker takes over at second base from Randolph. Kirby Puckett takes over in center field from Ricky Henderson. Mark McGuire takes over at first base from Manningly. Kevin Seitzer takes over at third from Wade Boggs. Harold Baines, I know he's a DH, but it's 7-0 and it's late, so he's going to play in left field in place of George Bell. Dwight Evans, again, I guess, is the right fielder taking over for Winfield. So we're ready to go. Keith Hernandez gets his first at bat here against Jay Howell, who is an ace this at bat. 1-5-5. Is he a home run king? He's a semi-slugger, but he's not a home run king, so it's a fly to center for Keith Hernandez. So there's one away, and that'll bring up the Murph, Dale Murphy, his first at bat. So 4-5-6 against Jay Howell. 4-5-6 is blank for the pitcher. Is he patient? Dale Murphy... Murphy is semi-patient. Sire Dye says no. So he's going to fly to center, and that's out number two. That says going to the chemistry chart for the next at-bat for Bo Diaz. And both teams have been predisposed to be harmonious since it's an all-star game, so we're going to play it that way. It's a 1-5. 1-5. Pitching team harmony. Yep, it's a line out. Jay Howell gets Diaz to line out to short. And the seventh inning is over. So we've got seventh inning stretch time, and we'll be back with a new pitcher for the American League. I'm sorry, for the National League, right after this. All right, so Steve Bedrosian is on for the National League. He'll be facing Dwight Evans to start off the bottom of the seventh, and he will be an ace this first at bat. So 1 3 5. We're going to the umpires chart. We're going to break, wake up the umpires who have been sleeping, obviously, over there. So let's see what happens on the umpire chart. It's a 6 6 with the bases empty. 6-6, six, six, lenient umpire at third. Now, Joe West at third base is semi-strict and respected. He's not lenient. If he was lenient, it would be a home run on that long drive down the left field line. Other umpires rule foul, so we're going to have it another boot. So Dwight Evans just misses the home run. Joe West was not lenient to give it to him, so he's back in the box. It's a 1-1-2. One, one, and don't forget that Bedrosian's still an ace this at bat. 1-1-2. One, one, does he have flash? Yes, he does. Bedrosian does have flash, so it is a strikeout for Dwight Evans. He's patient, but he does not have a good eye, so he does strike out. So Evans is gone. Here's Alan Trammell, new shortstop. 2-2-6. Two, two, That's going to be a hit by the pitch because the decider die came up as a dot. So that is a hit by pitch. So Bedrosian plunks Trammell, brings up Trammell's teammate, Matt Noakes, new catcher. 1-2-4, 1-2-4, control pitcher. Bedrosian is semi-control, but the sire die says no. Is he eager? Matt Noakes. Matt Noakes is semi-eager, so we have to roll the decider die to see if he is eager. He is not, so we skip that check, and that means he walks. So, a hit batsman and a walk. Put two on with one out for Lou Whitaker. And the pitcher spot is next, so we will get a pinch hitter from the National. I'm sorry, from the American League. It will be Tony Fernandez. Three four six, three four six. I'm not sure why I'm looking at Whitaker there. Three four six. The pitcher is blank. It's easy eager. So Whitaker is not eager. 
so he will walk. So the bases are now loaded, and Bedrosian is now a semi-struggler. After a hit batsman and two walks. And that brings up the pinch hitter, Tony Fernandez. And they've used everybody. The American League, the only player they have left on the bench is Harold Reynolds. Everybody else has been used now. So Fernandez is going to pinch hit for Jay Howell. We get a 2 4 5. 2 4 5, 2 4 5. Nothing for the pitcher. Is he a hero? Hernan uh, Fernandez is not a hero. So he will pop it up to second, and that's out number two. So Tony Fernandez is out of there. And that's two away. We're back to the top of the order, and his first to bat for Kirby Puckett. So Kirby Puckett gets the chance to bat. He's taking the place of Henderson against Bedrosian. It's a 5-6-6. Six, 5-6-6. Six. Six, six. Is he wild? No, he's not. Is, does the batter have a good eye? No, he does not. So it's a strikeout. And that's going to end the inning. So Bedrosian pitches out of that mess. Nothing doing for the American League. We've played seven. It's seven nothing Nationals over the American. Be right back for the new pitcher for the American League and in the top of the eighth. All right, new pitcher for the American League is Tom Hinkie. He will be in. He will be an ace this at bat. It's going to be Hubie Brooks and then a pinch hitter will be Ozzy Virgil. And then we'll have Tim Raines. So the batter is 2-3-4 for Hinkie, who is an ace this at bat. There's nobody on base. Is he a hot batter? No, he just started, so he can't be a hot batter. It's a pop out to third. So Hubie Brooks is out of there. One away, and now we're going to get the pinch hitter, Ozzy Virgil. That will leave Willie McGee. As the only, actually, we're going to have, uh, yeah, McGee will be the only guy on the bench so far that has not played from the position players. Ozzie Virgil is pinch hitting against Hinky. Virgil coming off that two Grand Slam performance, his last game of the regular season, or second to last game of the regular season, I should say. 2 5 6. 2 5 6. Is he a struggler? No. Is he champion or patient? He is neither. So we have infield drama. Infield drama for the American League. And it's a 5-6. Five, 5-6 six. Five, six on the infield drama. First baseman, gold. The new first baseman is McGuire. He is not gold. So it's going to be an error on McGuire. So an E3 on McGuire. And Virgil reaches. And Willie McGee will pinch run for Virgil. So that will get McGee in the game. So everybody will be in the game now for the National League. Here's Tim Raines. Oh, got to roll the black die as well. So 156 for Reigns. His first at bat. 156. Is he a whiffer? Tim Reigns is not a whiffer. So now we have outfield drama. Outfield drama for the American League. We get a 3 4 on the outfield drama. 3 4 says left fielder iron. No, the left fielder for the American League. Well, it's Harold Baines, but he's not rated. So I'm going to call it a fly out to left because I didn't say he was iron. So, And it's 7-0 and we're late, so we're going to give him a break. So he makes the play two down for Juan Samuel. 2-3-6. Two, 2-3-6. Six. Two, six. That's scorekeeper's prerogative when it's like this. 2-3-6. Double control. No. Oh, yeah. No, he has double flash. Does not have double control. Pitcher's not batting, so it will be a walk to Samuel. Puts runners at first and second for Tony Gwynn. Tony Gwynn will get his first at bat. Tony Gwynn. One, five, six for Gwynn. Is he a whiffer? No, he's not. We got outfield drama again. So we're back to outfield drama. It's a one, three. One, three. Center fielder iron. The center fielder is Puckett. He is not iron, so he will make the catch. And the top of the eighth is over. So we'll go to the bottom of the eighth. It's still 7 0 National League. We'll be right back with a new American League pitcher. And of course, I meant to say National League pitcher, who, uh, John Franco. John Franco is on. He'll be an ace this first to bat against Mark McGuire. It's a 1 2 4 for McGuire. 1 2 4 for McGuire. Is he have control? Franco has semi control. Decide or die says no. Is the batter McGuire eager? He is not. So he's going to walk. So Mark McGuire draws a leadoff walk. Brings up Kevin Seitzer, the third baseman, new third baseman. And we got a 2 4 6, 2 4 6 control pitcher. Franco, sem again, semi control, but Desire Die says no. Is he eager or sad sack? No, he's not, so we're going to have another walk. 
And now we got control issues for Franco. Here's Harold Baines, defun defuncto left fielder. 166. 166. Is he a workman? No. Is he a whiffer? Yes, he is. Baines is a semi whiffer. The sire die says he's a whiffer. So Baines is out on strikes for out number one. Brings up Dwight Evans, right fielder. 456 for Evans. 456, blank for the pitcher. Is he patient? Evans is patient, semi patient. Desire Die says he's patient, so it's another walk, and that will load the bases. Bases loaded for Alan Trammell as the American League tries to get on the board. It's a 355. 355 is the pitcher a struggler. He is not a struggler yet. He is a batter a champion. Trammell is a semi champion. Desire Die says he's a champion. So we got a double to left field for Alan Trammell, and that's going to bring home two runs. Two runs. It's a two run double for Trammell. Cuts the lead to seven to two. Moves Evans to third. And that brings up Matt Noakes, the catcher. We got a one one two. One one two. Does he have flash? He's got semi flash. And Desire Die says he has flash, so it is a strikeout for Noakes. Out number two. Brings up Lou Whitaker. Number eight hitter in the lineup. Pitcher spot is next, so Reynolds would pitch hit. Two, five, six. Struggler, no. Is he champion or patient? No. Infield drama. So infield drama for the National League. We get a 3-3 three, three on the infield drama. 3-3, three, three. pitcher iron. No, the pitcher Hinky. I'm sorry, the pitcher uh, Franco is not iron. So it's going to be an easy ground out, and that will end the inning. But the American League picks up two in the eighth. We go to the ninth, score seven to two National League. New pitcher for the American League, Dave Rigetti, in to pitch the ninth. Here's Wallach to lead things off. 1-4-5, and Rigetti is an ace this at bat. 1-4-5, is he a struggler? No, so it's going to be a ground ball to third. And there's one away. That brings up Keith Hernandez, first baseman. Four, five, six, four, five, six. Blank for the pitcher. Is he patient? No, he's not. He will fly to center. And that will take us to the chemistry chart for the Dale Murphy at bat. Both teams are harmonious. It's a one, five on the chemistry chart for harmonious. One, five. Pitching team harmony. Yes, he is. As a line out. Who will say the shortstop to end the inning. So Rigetti pitches a perfect ninth. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Last chance for the American League. And Lee Smith, the Cub closer, is in to try to close the deal. And the pitcher spot is going to lead off the inning. So last available player, Harold Reynolds, will pinch hit for the American League against Lee Smith, who is an ace this at bat. 3-5-6. That's the left-right check. And Reynolds is a switch hitter, so that's going to be a base hit. So Harold Reynolds... Since he's a switch hitter, gets that base hit. And now we're back to the top of the order for Kirby Puckett. Kirby Puckett, a 4 4 5 for Puckett. 4 4 5. 4 4 5 is Workman for Smith. No, he's not. Is Puckett patient? No, he's not. It's a ground out to first, and that's going to advance the runner. So there's one away with Reynolds going to second base. Brings up Mark McGuire. Smith two outs away from closing this thing down. One, two, five. One, two, five. Is he a struggler? No. Is McGuire patient? No, he's not. It's a ground out to third unless he's a whiffer, and Desire Dice says no. So it's a ground out to third, and Reynolds will have to hold. So last chance, it'll be Kevin Seitzer. Kevin Seitzer. And it's a one, four, five. This could do it. One, four, five. Is he a struggler? No. It's a ground out to third, and that's the ball game. The National League holds on for victory by the final score of 7-2. to two. Be right back with the wrap-up. All right, this is unofficial. I have the line score to be 7-12-0 for the National League, 2-6-1 for the American League. I um, hope you guys enjoyed this presentation. I tried to get everybody involved in the game, and everyone got a chance to play. Uh, I guess the only guy that could feel slighted is Willie McGee because all he got to do was pinch run. But everybody else, all pitchers and hitters, got in the game which was part of the plan, and you got to see some of the American League in, in the History Maker Baseball 1987 as uh, the All-Star game from Oakland is complete. Final score, National League 7, American League 2, 
Until next time, we'll see you down the road.